Paul starts his letter to the Ephesian Christians by saying, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. But what is grace? I'm reminded of the little boy who was about to be introduced to the Archbishop. When you talk to the Archbishop, his father said, you should always say, your grace. And the boy was duly introduced to the Archbishop, who said, hello, young man. And the boy replied, for what we're about to receive, may the Lord make us truly grateful. It's an old joke, well, most of mine are, but it is just one illustration of how diverse the use of the word grace is. If you look it up in a dictionary, that's a very long list. Among those are elegance or beauty of form, manner, motion or action, a pleasing or attractive quality, a display of favour especially by a superior, an allowance of time after a debt or bill has become payable, granted to the debtor before legal action is uh, started. It can be a short prayer before or after a meal. It can mean mercy, clemency, pardon, favour or goodwill. And the, the Queen has grace and favour apartments which she gives mainly to the minor royals. Or it's a free gift, graciously given to a favoured person. In Christianity, grace is like those last couple of definitions. It's the kindness that God shows to people because he loves them. To a Christian, grace at its simplest is a gift of love and forgiveness from God, one that is impossible to earn or deserve, but that is freely and graciously given. No one, however good they might be in human terms, can ever match up to the perfection of God, or deserve all that God will give us. But that's the wonder of grace. It's nothing to do with anything that we can do. It's what God freely offers. It springs from love and it is freely given. The only actions required of us are to accept God's grace and, having done so, to pass it on to others. John Newton, a former captain of a slave trading ship who became a slave himself and later returned to trafficking human lives, became, after his conversion, a leading anti-slavery campaigner. He was ordained as a Church of England clergyman and served at Olney. He's the one who wrote Amazing Grace in celebration of his experience of God's love so freely given and that he felt so unworthy to receive. This is a modern version of that hymn.
Jesus.